Hi, welcome back again, and today we're looking at this. Now, this is a Hutchins, I believe an AL1 model. Uh, British company, formed in 2006. I found a, a web page that doesn't tell you too much about them, but I'll put it in the uh, description box below. And as always, timestamps, if you don't hear me waffle, skip through the bits you want to hear, because this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual. Now, this turned up in a mate shop as a job lot of a lot of other guitars, and it immediately caught my eye. For one, I quite like the finish under under the paint finish there. You can kind of see almost like a, a maple sort of striped top. Uh, it's a set neck, uh, I believe older body rosewood fretboard. Now I've no idea about the rest of the construction of the guitar. They come from factories in Korea and China, but they're British designed. Now, this is looking very much epiphony, isn't it? or Gibson-esque, I should say, the stop tail piece and the bridge, and obviously the humbucker style pickups there. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But this does need a complete strip down and a full setup. Uh, the strings are old, there's only five strings, so it's not gonna to sound too good. And uh, we can, by stripping it down, find a bit more about it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna play it with the five strings, see what it sounds like now, just to get a good idea of that and then we'll get it fully stripped. So let's get to it. Okay, there's the first sound test. It's got promise, I'll give it that. Um, not sure about the pickups yet. There's something there I like about them. I'm just wondering if they're a little bit shallow sounding. But these strings are really, really old and yeah, we're not giving it a good chance yet. So let's get on our bench, completely stripped down and get on with the work. Okay, you've got guitar turned over, and it looks like it's made from uh, three blocks of the, to make up the body, which is kind of not unusual with a, a lower end guitar, to be honest. But it looks pretty solid. Okay, let's get this uh, cover plate off because I do want to clean the pots because they're just the tiniest bit of crackling to them. A fairly standard setup. So I shall now turn the guitar back over, take the pots out, and we'll give them a squirt and clean them up. Well, the, the bridge is absolutely stuck tight, they're supposed to just drop off. It's gradually starting to work loose here, but it's really, really badly gummed up. The thing is absolutely minging. So I think I have to actually unscrew the whole thing. And release it separately. Okay, 
I'm doing each side at a time so it doesn't actually stretch um, stress the bridge because that really is stuck tight. Got it pretty stuck out. Okay, well, let's get back there in a minute. Probably do that off camera because it might be some swearing. Uh, next bit, we'll get these pot covers removed. Like I say, the pots are a little crackly, so we're going to remove them and I'll give them a little spray. I'm just supporting the wiring at the back so nothing twists. And obviously you've got to be careful you don't scratch the top of the guitar with the end of your spanner. Sometimes it's a good idea to tape them. Okay, I should move on with that and we'll move on to the next stage. Well, I've got the uh, pots and switches out. So um, <clears throat> this is a sealed switch. Uh, so it's obviously got little clasps closed over, but I'm still going to give it a spray anyway, um, just to see if some works in. It doesn't crackle too badly, but it helps. And we're using some of this, which is just a propriety uh, switch cleaner and contact cleaner, just to protect the guitar body. It's not so important with these sort of poly finished guitars, but if you've got a nitrate finished guitar, you really do want to make sure you don't get any of the stuff on it. And you see in the pot, I don't know if it shows on the camera, but there is a little opening within the pot. And it's just a case of getting some of that worked into it. And this helps clean the wipers of the pot. That's already feeling much smoother. Well, let's have a on this one. Yeah, that's feeling much better. Okay, the stuff evaporates away. It doesn't tend to leave any residue. I'll give that a minute before I put it all back together, then we'll flick it over. Now, there's no um, telltale signs of anything inside the cavities. Um, there is some writing on the back of the pickups, which just says... I'll show you actually in a minute because I can't remember. Okay, we'll get on to that. Okay, you've got the uh, pots and switch back in. I've reorientated the switch as well because it's obviously slipped round at some point. I did manage to get the posts out. It looked like there's some uh, either retainer or they're just corroding in. And the reason this is so tight, that the bridge itself, is because I think these holes are fractionally out, meaning these are very tight on the posts. It's still adjustable, but just a little bit irritating. Uh, turn it over, there's nothing stamped in them. So, no giveaway to the maker's, maker's mark. Uh, but the pickups have Artec, Artec neck, and this one has Artec bridge, a B on it. So I don't know much about these, whether they're custom made or designed uh, by the company Hutchins. Um, I have no idea. I'll see if I can find out a bit more about them. Okay, well this is gonna need a really good clean now. I don't know if you can see on camera here how dirty and stained these pickups are. Everything seems a bit mingy. So we're gonna polish the uh, the body up. And before we do that, I'm just gonna check the fret as well quick and make sure that's all okay. Because obviously now's the time to sort any uh, fret issues out. So I'll just show you how I do that. Okay, checking the frets out. Uh, use a tool like this. Obviously it's got several sides because of the different pitch of the, the frets themselves. And it just place it on the frets like so. Now I've done this on a number of videos, so I'm going to go too detail. But if you can hear that, that's rocking. So the second fret is fractionally higher than the others. Now it might need a tap in. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it might just need a gentle tap in. Or what I'll do is I'll get the blocks out and just uh, recrown them using that. And you just work your way down the whole guitar. They seem pretty good actually. Tight. Yeah, it's almost nothing. And believe me, I've tried this on some new guitars. I'm not going to say the makes, but various makes. And they're not always that great. Yeah, this is almost negligible. I didn't actually notice any fret buzz when I was uh, trying it out earlier. 
Okay, I'm going to work down the rest of them, just check them out. And then we'll look for any wear on the frets. It doesn't seem to have any real groove, so yeah, I think it's in pretty good condition apart from the fact it's incredibly dirty. Um, yeah, once I've checked the frets, I'll polish them and then I'm going to treat the fretboard, give that a clean and put some oil in that and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I've checked all the frets down through. They seem pretty good. Um, this one is the only one, it's not much of an issue, but as you can see, I'm protecting the fretboard with this little tool and I'm just going to give it a rub over the top first with this block and then with a the smoother block and then we'll just give them all a polish. Now, I've done this to death on a number of videos, so if you check my projects out on my main page, you'll see some really detailed videos of how I actually fully set up whole, whole necks. So it might be worth looking at that if you're interested. I'm just going to gently rub over this, like that. Check. And that's already feeling much better. It's hardly anything there at all now. So it takes very little work to get it into a good state. So I think I'm just going to polish this one now. Okay, all the edges of the frets are really well finished that's quite impressive because there's uh, several makes of guitar I tried for new and they, they actually need dressing and for that you'd use this tool uh, as you can see it's got a file in the center there but it's smooth on the outsides and the edges and you would just dress the fret like that removes all the burrs again that's on the videos I've already done so I'm not gonna go over that in too much detail well right, I think we're ready now to just clean the rest of the frets and then we'll treat the fretboard Okay, just going to um, clean the frets now. So I tend to use this as metal polish. That's just a little bit on a cloth. I've already done the first three. They're looking so much shinier already. And this just takes off all the tarnish. So obviously when you're playing guitar, you've got uh, grease in your fingers. Some people have quite acidic skin as well. Um, you can tell that if your strings go black pretty quickly. It's worth using a, a string clean every time you play, really. It doesn't take much. You can see those already coming. I'm not sure you can actually on this camera, but they really are coming up quite nicely. And it's just good to give uh, your guitars a proper clean. Every now and again, when you're changing your strings, just it doesn't take a lot of work just to go through and check your frets, give them a clean, and then treat the fretboard. Yeah, so I just gonna move past camera. Oh my, yeah, what a difference. Okay, now we're going to um just treat the fretboard. So I've just got to find the cleaner for that. Okay, what I use is this, which uh, is just a lemon oil. Um, there are other makes, obviously. I actually quite like this one. I got it free with the guitar that I bought. I think it was with Gibson, actually. And it's so good, I've been using it ever since. I tend to use it every time I change strings. So just get a piece of paper toweling, spray a bit onto that, and then you can just gently work it into the fretboard and it also cleans as it goes uh, that's quite dry that's actually soaking in quite quickly you don't normally need to use a lot of it like I say that's why you spray it onto the cloth first but that is a very very dry fretboard and it also cleans as it goes Yeah, I think I need to put a bit more on that.
Okay, finished polishing the uh, the pickups. They look a, a lot better now. They've got a lot of tarnishing on them. So I'm just going to give some polish onto the uh, the body of the guitar now. And I use this stuff. I know it's a Gibson one. There's loads of other makes out there. Um, the reason I got a Gibson one is because when I bought my Gibson, they gave me this because it's the only stuff that you can use safely on Nitrix finished guitars. But it works perfectly finished on these sort of poly finishes as well. So a little gentle squeeze onto there. That's just like polishing a table, there's nothing clever about it. But proper propriety, I was going to say, uh, guitar polish does seem to do a better job than <laughs> the, your normal domestic sort of furniture polish. So I think it's also sort of cleans as well, so it lifts a lot of the grime out. Yeah, already that's starting to come up really nicely. Like all these things, the more time and care you put into it, the better the results, really. It's actually quite rewarding. And like I said before, every time you change your strings, just give your guitar a really good clean. Just keep the grime off it, keep the finish nice. Unless, of course, you like your beat-up guitars, then uh, don't do anything to it. Okay, that's coming up quite nice. So I'll do the rest of it, and then we'll start putting the thing back together, and that'll be ready for restringing. But before I do that, because we've obviously taken the pots and the switch out, I just want to make sure everything is still operational. So I'll just show you how to check that when you haven't got strings on. Like I said, I just plugged my amplifier in. This one bridge position, so you should be able to hear that. And no crackle on the pot whatsoever, so the switch clean has done its job. Tone. Both. Neck. There you go. Tibbles now we know we're ready to put the rest of it together without uh, having to go back in and fix wiring faults that could have occurred by taking it all apart. Well, there she is, all back together. Absolutely gorgeous now, isn't it? Yeah, it's come out really, really well. As you can see, the polish has really done its job. And it's always good to remove the pick card and get all the guns out from under them as well. And you see the frets are nice and shiny now. And the hardware on the headstock, too. I'll just show you the back, too. Uh, there's the back. As you can see, it really has come up really well. Yeah, very happy with that. Just shows what a bit of time in polish can do. Okay, I think we're now ready to um, get strings on and give a full review of how this thing sounds. Ah, welcome back. Right, the strings have arrived. Uh, they took a bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, what I'm going to be using today is these Daddario's XL 110s. Um, used them a lot in the past. The three D ones, all the standards, both absolutely superb strings. I tend to stick to those or rotor sounds. Um, I'm not endorsing them. Um, they're just after trying out so many different makes, they're the ones that I I really stick with simply because they hold tune so well and they're very, very long lasting. Um, I'm not gonna record every string going on. I'm just gonna record this bit just to show you how I do it. Um, not saying this is the right way, but it's recommended by Gibson, I believe. And it works from all my Gibsons. Everything holds tune, um, so they always do it this way. So first one is the uh, Thick E pull it through so it's tight over the back of the uh, bridge. Then I grip the string here, and I'm gonna pull it back just over about one and three quarter frets, one and a half frets, and that gives you the right amount of turns over the top. Now, you want the string to be on the outside of the peg, correctly otherwise you get the wrong breakout angle. So we go around that way, over the top, pull it back tight, lift this piece up, Okay, and now the other subsequent turns are going to go underneath there, and that grips it all nice and tight. Obviously you can use one of these uh, propriety, I can't say propriety these days, one of these tools, they work an absolute treat for speeding things up and they've got the cutter at the other end. Uh, these are quite short posts, but you can see that's going on fairly neatly there. There we go. First ring in and just repeat across the rest of the strings. When you get to thinner strings, I tend to do um, 
two frets. So just pull from here back to the two frets, gives you ample turns over the top. Um, please, please, whatever you do, don't put strings on as I'm gonna show you in this picture now. Yeah, absolutely bloody appalling. It took me longer to get those strings off the pegs than it did to string the whole guitar up. And people wonder why strings break. It's when you do <laughs> do knots at the top of the pegs. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on now, finish stringing it up, and then we're gonna get into playing it. the Hutchins AR1. Now it definitely sounds better with the new strings and since I've set it up it's got quite a nice low action. The intonation is actually spot on and it's cleaned up really well hasn't it? Now I appreciate it's been quite a long video um, but hence you can just skip to the bits that you want to see. Now I'm still not sold on these pickups. Now we know there are tech pickups. I did a bit more research and Artec are a Korean company and they make a whole range of pickups from sort of budget end right up to the high end, as well as other electronic uh, goods. Um, they also make a lot of pickups for other guitar manufacturers. So they do have some pedigree. Now, I don't dislike these pickups. I just still think they sound a little short and shallow. 
Um, what do you think? Anybody else out there got one of these guitars or another Hutchins? I'll be uh, interested to hear from you, so please put in the comments and let me know how you get on with them. Um, yeah, overall it's a very good guitar. It plays quite nice, it's got a slick neck, it's got a nice weight and feel to it. It's well balanced, so there's not much to dislike about it really. I'm still in two minds whether to buy it or not. Anyway, I've got more videos coming up. Uh, there's some more amp videos and more guitar videos, uh, including some more in the um, cheap obscure guitars that don't suck question mark range. So uh, please stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's it for now. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up again soon. Bye now.